Sheila sold her business to a $6 billion company. Today, you'll learn how you can also create a very successful business with a woman that actually did it. Sheila was known as an icon of the lodging industry. Sheila today is a founder of Success Strategies Group, an online live business training group. The participants are business owners that enjoy online live training as Skolnick guides the training in alignment with her own principles of business. She includes top experts from all over the country with live training in sales, marketing, technology, and more. Ladies and gentlemen, Sheila Skolnick. Thank you, Kirby. It's an honor to be speaking to the great members of the Chamber of Commerce of the Palm Beach. This organization stands tall in Palm Beach County and represents us all very well. It's a pleasure for me to have this opportunity to assist you in the growth of your business. Now let's get started. I'm going to be talking about uh, principles of business. Most of them I created myself uh, and mindset. I created some of them when I was a child and while building my business. These principles guided me and I know they will help and guide you as you navigate your business and life through this horrific pandemic and beyond. One of the reasons I want to touch upon briefly on my childhood is to stop assumptions that I have advantages you do and how my childhood and how my childhood had an effect on my business. My childhood started, the problem childhood started when I was living in Brooklyn at age five years old in a very dangerous and terrifying housing project. And there were difficulties as well in my home and in my school. I had no adult to help me with the dangers I experienced on a daily basis. Some of them were life-threatening. For example, I remember when I was outside of my building playing when these 17 age boys surrounded me they were very tall. They were so tall, they took the light away. I was terrified. And I saw my neighbor walking by, and I saw it through one of the boy's legs, and I screamed, Mommy, Mommy! And I pushed through, and I ran to my neighbor, and I said, Thank you very much. And I walked away to safety. My mom would tell me, If anyone bothers you, just tell me and I will speak to the mother. Well, that was assuring for a while. However, after I witnessed two women, after I witnessed two women, one came out of uh, the building on my right and one came out of the building on my left. The one, one woman on my right came out with a frying pan, big black frying pan screaming and yelling. And from the other building, another woman came out with a frying pan, big black skillet, yelling and screaming. And they both met in the middle and right in front of me and beat each other bloody. After what I witnessed, I learned I could never tell my mom anything as I feared for her life. My schools, needless to say, were terrifying as well. Half of the students didn't speak English and the other half did not have any parental uh, supervision. So years later, I had to teach myself to read and catch up on my education. I learned many survival skills, which served me well when I started my business years later. Again, years later, I needed to support my sons as there was no way I would let my as there was no way I was to let my son live the same hellish life I did as a child. So I started a business with no money, no contacts, and no knowledge of the hotel industry, which I went into. I went door to door. I saw 15 hotels a day, and in each hotel, there were three departments. That meant I saw 45 departments a day in the lodging industry and they all threw me out. And it took me one year to finally get my first order and that was to the Plaza Hotel. Now I have a teaching moment to you, for you. After the client finally let me in and felt secure with me, I would ask him these questions and you should really write them down. What products or services do you need 
that your other vendors are not giving you? What pricing or deliveries would you like that your other vendors are not giving you? Be quiet, write everything down, that client says, because those are orders you can get in the future. Of course, you have to figure it out and get that for them. So tell your client, you know what? I wrote it down here and I will try to achieve what you need. And generally, when I came back with what they wanted, that was an order. Now, <clears throat> my first principle was, it doesn't have to look a certain way. I was having uh, dinner in a diner. Uh, I was flipping through the newspapers and I saw a five-year-old little girl hugging an elephant. She didn't, she didn't, she did it because she didn't know that you can't do that. Here's the picture of the elephant and the little girl. I hope you can see it. Okay. She's off on a stool, sitting next to an elephant, hugging it. And the point of this picture is, it taught me, you can do whatever you want to do. Now, this little girl did not know you can't just sit and hug an elephant. So, I will tell you that as, I, as we grow up, we are taught what to do and not to do. Seeing this picture of this little girl, she didn't know that she couldn't do it. And it changed my way of thinking for the rest of my life. Let me give you permission to open your mind to all kinds of thoughts that you have, that you need to learn life does not have to look a certain way. My principle number two is, if it's to be, it's up to me. Never blame anyone for your problems. Don't blame mom and dad and the schools and the environment and the government or anybody. Because when you blame someone else, you give away all your power to fix it. Now, I'm going to give you an example of uh, not blaming and, and fixing problems. I had a client in Manhattan at the St. Regis Hotel, which I was three hours away from him. And he calls me up and he's yelling, Sheila, Sheila, he was the purchasing agent. He was yelling, Sheila, Sheila, help me, I'm going to get fired. I said, what, what? He said, the chairman of the board is coming to the hotel today and we were supposed to have a brass bellman's cart to greet him. And we don't have it, my vendor didn't ship it and I will get fired. I said, calm down, let me think of a solution. So I called the general manager at another hotel and I told him what happened. Not only did he say yes, but he also had his bellman shine it up and walked it right over to the St. Regis Hotel. And guess who didn't get fired? And guess, and guess who had a customer for life? Me. This worked also because of the relationship I formed with both customers. Teaching moment. You ready? Write this down. You must train your mind that the moment you discover a problem, you must immediately start thinking of solutions to the problem. Losers blame. Winners put all their energy and thoughts into solving the problem. My next um, principle is not asking is an automatic no. Most lack the courage and don't like rejection. Neither did I. But I used to have, but I used to say to myself, Sheila, what bad's going to happen if you ask? No, they're not going to believe that woman actually, actually asked me that. No, none of that's going to happen. Now, if you ask, you get 50% chance of a yes. If you don't ask, you get 100% no chance at all. Now listen, I did not have the luxury to think to ask or not think. I had to force myself because I had children to feed, employees to pay, and also vendors, vendors to support and pay the bills. So very, so under very, Difficult circumstances, 
of this pandemic and whatever comes up, asking for what you need is the must. Be bold and fearless. Ask for what you need, but be sure it is what your customer really needs or it'll be your last order. Years ago, um, I was in a building with my employees and merchandise, blah, 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 and something happened in the lodging industry and business went dead. So I called up my landlord. I said, Mr. Lou, I have to move out. I know my lease is up because I just don't have enough money to uh, pay you unless you can help me. He said, oh, Mrs. Skolnick, no worries. He says, uh, three months for free and the balance of the year, half price rent. I asked. All I did is ask. Think about all the times you could have asked and didn't ask. Just, just go for it. They're not going to hit you, laugh at you or anything. You're only going to gain business. My next um, principle of business is say yes to everything unless it's illegal, immoral, can hurt you or somebody else. I have a uh, coaching, I had a coaching group. Um, I coached individually and I coach groups. And at all the meetings, I used to teach them all my principles of business. And um, this, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm losing my place. I coach individually and in groups. And when, you, and when you say yes, you can expand your, your product line as well. So, for, so this, this one guy came in and he said to um, go back to where I was. I'm so terribly sorry. I'm so imperfect. This one, one of my, um, one of my um, clients told the group, he said, I had a client that asked me for something. And I was just about to say, no, I don't do it. When I heard Sheila in my head say, is it illegal? Is it immoral? Can it hurt me or somebody else? And I said to myself, no. So I said to my client, let me work on that and I'll get back to you and let you know if I can do it for you. Well, he went back, did his research, figured it out. And not only was he able to help that client with that issue, but he discovered many clients wanted the same kind of thing. So he went from $275,000 a year to over a million. He found something that many of his clients needed. So don't say no. I'll tell you one more. I was uh, at a trade show and a representative from the mayor's office um, asked me if I'd like to uh, go to Hong Kong representing our country on a trade mission. Well, I thought to myself, is it illegal, immoral, can hurt me or somebody else? And the answer was no. So I said to him, yes. I said, but I have to get back to you to see my availability. Actually, I had to go find out who these people were and if it was for real. Well, I said yes. And I went as a diplomat to Hong Kong. And I met the most amazing people, incredible contacts that I would never make in my entire life. And I made a friend uh, by the name of Farouk Achitsad. He was an ambassador at large. And we had lunch at the UN uh, at least once a month. Plus incredible people that I would have never, never known. My next one is never listen to the stupidity of the masses. My son was in the Twin Towers when the plane hit in 2001. I immediately ran to the TV and I started counting the floors because he was on the 33rd and I just want to see because the plane was already hit and I could see it on TV. I started counting and every time I count, the picture would either change or I'd lose count. So I counted again the floors and I almost figured it out. And all of a sudden, the building collapsed. At 12.12, I got a phone call. And on the other side, he said, Mommy, Mommy, I'm safe. I said, tell me what happened. Tell me what went on. He says, well, he says, when the plane hit, we were so unsteady. 
He says, we ran to the staircase and we ran down the steps. At first, it went fast and then it went slower and slower and slower and we started getting really scared as all sorts of horrible things were going on around us. Then we finally got to the mezzanine and we knew that we were close to safety. But all of a sudden, security guards came out and took us back and put us in the, me the mezzanine hall. Well, he said, I stood there for a few seconds and he says, all of a sudden, I heard you scream in my head. Never listen to the stupidity of the masses. Well, I heard you and I pushed my way out to safety. And unfortunately, the people that stayed on the mezzanine level all died. Teaching moment. During this difficult pandemic times, don't listen to the negativity of the masses. Wake up every day and think, what can I create today? What calls, what marketing? Just understand, you can do it if you believe you can. I say to you, be a warrior and fight for your financial life and safety. Form that habit every day. Wake up and have those thoughts. The next thing I'd like to advise you on is to be observant. I learned the industry by going to hotels and asking questions and purposely observing, looking for problems that I can solve. So I went to at least 17 trade shows a year and every hotel that I went to, and this particular hotel was the Chicago, uh, Chicago Sheridan with 3000 rooms. So the day before the trade show, I would, call housekeeping and I would ask them to please bring up an iron and an ironing board. They, I gave them a tip, I took the iron and ironing board and I put it under the bed because I needed it for several days. And if I didn't put it away, housekeeping would take it the next day. And getting an iron and ironing board took hours and hours and hours and hours. And when you have to be at a trade show looking your best, you don't have hours and hours. Then I thought, Aha, if I'm having this problem, so are many other guests at this great large hotel. So I made a decision to have this hotel install irons and ironing boards in every single room. How I was going to make that happen, I didn't know, but I knew it was a problem and I decided that I was just going to solve it. The first thing I had to do was uh, do a little research. So I went down to housekeeping and I asked her, you know, how many complaints, do you, do you get many complaints about customers not getting their irons and ironing boards on time? And she says, oh yes, every day we're, we're faced with frantic guests, angry guests. She says, okay. And I said, how many, how many housemen do you have to deliver it upstairs to the guests? She says, first of all, you could never have enough because they're just, they're just too many rooms. But we have five housemen that deliver it to the rooms, an iron and an ironing board. And so then I had to find out how much it costs for them for housekeeping to pay these people. Well, she told me how much it cost. And then I did my own math and I said, well, if I charge X amount for an iron and an ironing board. And I figured I was gonna put it in the guest room closet. If I charge X amount to put an iron, a holder and an ironing board in the closet, it would cost them about 3,000 of them at $45 each. It would cost them $135,000 expenditure. But not only would they eliminate all that bad complaints, but it would be, it would pay for itself in less than a year. Very long story short, actually not that long because I acted on it right away. So I went around to corporates and I went around to all the powers to be and I told them the situation and 
you know, told them I invented this and I had no competition because no one even thought of it yet. Of course, when they did think of it, boy, were they on, were they all, all over that. But at any rate, I personally sold 1.5 million units over five years. So $45 times uh, 1.5 million means on that one SKU, on that one product, I sold $67 million worth of product. Well, it was a win-win. The properties were saving money and stopping complaints. I did this many times in my business career. You just need to look for issues. I know we all have products to sell, but look for something you can solve and you'll be a big winner because you won't have all those competitors being mean, mean, mean to you. Today, 98% of hotels worldwide, which is 48,000 hotels, have them in, have this item, in, have the iron board and holder that I invented in every single room. Teaching moment, I want you to purposely, when you go out to see your customers, think about problems that you can solve in your industry. If you were purposely observing it, you'd be ahead of the game. The next one is another uh, problem solver and a drop of mirroring. I used to go see um, my hotels in Manhattan. Um, I used to do around the night to get to see all of them because I had all the four and five star hotels, most of them, mostly all of them, not every single one. There's some that I wouldn't sell to because they didn't pay their bills. <sighs> it's not difficult to figure out. So I went to the Plaza Hotel, which I sold a tremendous amount of merchandise to. And I come in and I come in and I see these green velvet, gaudy stanchions. And then I looked up and there was this really glitzy chandelier. Well, I got so upset, like I was a manager of the property, I owned it. I marched into purchasing and I said, Susan, Susan, what's going on? And she said, Sheila, don't you know that Mrs. Trump bought the property? Well, I asked her if she needed anything and she said, no, and I rushed home because I had to write a letter. Dear Mrs. Trump, congratulations on your purchase of the plaza, which is a four star historic property. However, you are going to lose your investment if you keep doing what you're doing to this property. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Sheila Skolnick, president, elite companies worldwide. Put a stamp on it, mailed it away. Zoe, I was done. I did that on Thursday night, which means it went out on Friday. Monday, I get a phone call from the director of purchasing. He called and said very harshly, Mrs. Trump wants to see you this afternoon. Now, I, I live three hours away from the city. And that was not going to happen. So I says, I can't come today. I'll come on um, Tuesday. I'll come. And, I, and he says, okay. And I says, well, how about coming on Tuesday? I said, I can't come on Tuesday either. Well, I want to tell you smoke was coming out of that phone. I wasn't trying to play hard to get. I just needed to go into Manhattan and stand on the corner and figure out what to wear for our meeting on Thursday. So I stood on the corner and I observed all the women of her ilk because she wasn't the same, because she was different. And I saw they all wore this cloth flower right over here and the kind of suits they wore. So it went directly to Blooming, Blooming Dales, it was Blooming Dales, and I bought the outfit. And so when I did go to see her on Thursday, I was in alignment with her. She opened the door, she opened the door. And when I saw her, there was this beautiful woman with a cloth flower right on her, on her suit. And she was wonderful. From that moment, we walked the hotel together and I advised her what she needs to keep her four star. 
through my observations, I sold millions to her. And it was a win-win. I sold her millions. And by the way, they paid bills on time. Because if they didn't, guess who would not, not be delivering another product? And they had a consultant they knew would do what was good for them. And um, one day, this is just something that's interesting for me, um, I went to her office and um, in the office were two of her children, Eric and Ivanka. And Mrs. Trump was sitting in a swivel chair when we were talking and she turns around and she says to her children, you are being very rude to Mrs. Fulmer. Now you be quiet till she leaves. And I thought to myself, holy mackerel. She walks around in spike heels, runs the, the hotel, and is a good mommy. I thought, wow. Um, for this little girl inside of me that that came from less than nothing and horrific experience. I couldn't even dream of all this happening to me. And I wanna just let all of you know, you are the writer, producer, and director of your life. It can be however you want it to be. Now I'm gonna tell you about the meaning of no. No doesn't mean no when you ask a customer for when you ask a customer for an order or an appointment. It just means that you didn't explain it correctly, or you didn't give enough information, or you don't know the real problem. I used to, when they said no, instead of going, <laughs> I used to just try asking again in a different way. And I suggest you try it because it worked a lot of times. Teaching moment. Don't sell a product that doesn't meet their needs. That will be the last time your client will trust you and your last order. Building a business is not only about the orders you get today. It's about all the orders you will get from that client now and in the future. I want to tell you about my favorite four letter word. It's next. Sometimes people jump into your life and they want to make you crazy or distract you from your business and you want, they want to prove they're right and prove that you're wrong. Guess what? You don't have to get involved in people's craziness and sanity. Let them be right. Who cares? Just be sure that you stay focused on your business and, and, and not let anyone distract you from staying focused on your business because you know how many times people jump in and blah, blah, blah. No, just Say next and move on to what you're doing. I had hired this woman um, and she came in nine o'clock Monday morning and at 12 o'clock she went to lunch and then by two o'clock my employee came in and said to me, Sheila, she never came back from lunch. So I walked over to where she sat and I asked everyone around her, was anything wrong? you know what happened and everyone said no everything seemed just fine so i went next didn't let it fill my head because i was in the middle of doing contracts and purchasing and all sorts of things and teaching my employees however three weeks later i get a letter from the department of labor saying suing or trying to sue me because I never paid her three weeks salary. Of course, we knew. I mean, I mean, I can easily prove she didn't work there three weeks and I uh, can have my employees come in and they wanted me to be my books and records. But the bottom line is I needed my employees to work and I needed to work. So I paid her the lousy three weeks 
salary. I said, next, and continue working my business. By the way, the cost of the salary compared to the cost of my time and my emotional and everyone else's time is not worth it. But think about how many things you get involved with mentally to prove you're right and someone's wrong. Or how many people try to jump into your life, try to jump into your life and, and distract you from what you're doing. It doesn't make any sense. Just use the word next. Let me just see. Okay. When I would go to networking meetings, and when I go now to net to networking meetings, I often notice that um, people would shake hands, and one person would say, "How are you?" And another person would say, oh, glad you asked, my back is killing me. Oh, and my wife is driving me nuts. And my kids, forget about it. People want to do business with people that are strong, powerful, and doing well, and are positive. Don't whine, don't whine. When someone says, how are you? Be sure to say, I feel great. Business is doing wonderful and my employees are the best. If I was any better, there'd be two of me. By the way, in all my groups that I have, I have a rule. Whining is not allowed. Negativity is not allowed. It serves no one. You want to look like you can do the job. You don't want to look like somebody weak. You want to look like you got it handled and you can handle it for them. Besides, if you can't handle yourself in your own life and every, you're so sickly, who's going to do business with you? It serves no one. My next principle is, this is, this is pretty important. <sighs> when I used to go around to my customers, I used to always ask them, how's everything doing? Am I doing right for you? Is everything good here? Because Ask your customers, ask your customers, how am I doing? It doesn't matter how you think you're doing. Who cares? It only matters what your customers think and your employees think and your vendors think. You have to ask and you will make more money and not lose customers. And when you go to ask them, don't ask them, what, how do I do good for you? You don't want to know that. What you want to know is, what, how can I improve? What can I do better? And that'll help you grow your business and it'll help you not lose customers. I would have customers that would say to me, you know, Sheila, I'm really glad you asked. The deliveries have not been good. And I used to write it, show them, I wrote it down. I say to them, Harry, I'm going to see to that and change it. And then someone would say to me, um, well, you know, one of your competitors came in at a better price. And, you know, I really want to do business with you, but I can't cut another purchase order unless you can cut your price. It takes a long time to get a customer. I cut my price and I kept that customer and I sold them that and I sold them other things as well. So ask, ask your customers, how am I doing? And go into your office. Ask your employees how they're doing. Do they see anything we can do better here? That's what you gotta do. Don't be uppity and, and think you know it all because believe me, you don't know it all. Nobody knows it all. But your employees and your customers know for sure. And if you have employees, I have to tell you, treat your employees like gold. They deserve your utmost respect. They can make you successful or they can destroy you. My employees were wonderful. They helped me build a great company. And my message to you is to try at least some of these principles of business and mindsets to help you grow your business. How I grew mine to a multi-million dollar business. And I guarantee you, you will do better. And I got to sell it, did I tell you, to a six billion dollar company. Boy, this little girl that grew up in, in tragedy, etc. Sure, I turned it around, but 
quite honestly, to this day, I don't really believe it, but I must because I did it. So I want to thank you all very, very much. And I would just love to hear your questions and answers. And what I want to hear is, how could I have done better? And what you'd like to know about um, growing your business. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sheila. That was great. I got a lot of fantastic pointers. Um, I'm sure everybody else can take at least one great thing away from this, if not many more. Um, I have a question for you to start off. So what are some steps that you took to train your mind from being in rags to riches? Because it's not an easy thing to do to change that mindset. First of all, it took me years. Um, it, it, it took years. And I, had, and I had no guidance, you know, I had no one to help me. So I had to figure out how to do it. And um, I would just have to stop my brain from thinking bad thoughts. And so, for example, I would, I would say, I would count. I approve of myself. I approve of myself. I approve of myself. And what this would do, it would stop bad thoughts from going on in my, in my head. And um, I also um, searched and searched for information, how to shift and change. I went to a variety of, of uh, self-help groups. Um, I really worked very, 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 very hard on uh, changing me and changing how I thought, or else, quite honestly, I couldn't have survived in life because it was just too much. And so that's what I did. I searched, found information, and now on the internet, holy cow, you can find anything you want. Um, so just to research and, and do read self-help books and read and, and do testimonials to yourself. Just lift yourself up emotionally and mentally. Um, that's how I did it. But truthfully, when I started working my business, I didn't have time to think of poor little me. I really had to earn money to support my kids. So it was so like a big distraction. All right. And anybody, I, f I want you to feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question if you have it or type it in the chat box. Um, you can either send it directly to me or send it out to everybody and Sheila can see that as well. I'm going to sit. Kelly, I cannot hear you. I have a question. Okay. Hi, I'm Chloe. Uh, Hi. I have, uh, thank you, it was a great speech. Um, I heard you talk about going to trade shows. Mm -hmm. um, is that a primary way of you getting clients? Can you tell me more how about you, how you got uh, your clients and um, how you do business at a trade show? Um, first of all, in the beginning, I had one booth. And by the time my company got big, 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 I had six booths. Um, I went to trade shows for my industry. And I showed my industry the products that I had and the products I was offering. Um, so you go to a trade show and you show them what you have, what's good about you, what you offer. And then just be sure to go around to everybody else's booth and see what they have. You never know, you could pick up an idea. But, because um, I know everyone came to our booth and sold every piece of literature and before we knew it, we had, to, we had to come up with something else. But that's what you do. You go to a trade show in your industry, learn the business, and that's what I do. Okay. I couldn't tell if Kelly was trying to ask something. I don't know if she's having an issue with her. <laughs> no. Can everybody unmute themselves? I have a statement or question. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> Hi. Um, so first of all, Sheila, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Um, your stories are engaging and really um, encouraging. So thank you so much for being so transparent. Um, I really love what you say when you said, say yes to everything. Um, I, <laughs> I think as women, sometimes we we tend to fall back 
on feeling like we're not qualified or we don't know enough. And truth is we do know enough. Um, and we do have that built in ability to grapple things quickly and really run with things. So that really spoke to me very loudly. I believe in the power of yes. Um, I've read something once that says, if someone offers you an opportunity and you don't know what to do, say yes, and then figure it out along the way. And so <laughs> I sort of lived my life like that. So I appreciate you saying that. That really moved me. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. Do we have anybody else? Sure you do. <laughs> Ladies, don't be shy. Like my teacher used to say, well, I'll just wait. <laughs> well, to fill in the space, I do want to remind you that we do have another Women in Business webinar next month on June 11th. That is, again, at 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Um, I'm sure we will do it virtually. I'm not sure if we will be open yet, but hopefully we are working on getting that way. Um, and I, again, I, I ask, ladies? I'm sorry. Just no, you're moment. fine. Yes, ladies, and any of your businesses, if you have any questions for me on, on how to market it or what's the best for you. Am I, did I scare them? <laughs> I don't think so. I think you just did a great yeah. job in explaining. Oh, Chloe has something. Yay, Chloe. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm all about embracing the Zoom thing. Um, I actually... Uh, on Monday, I had my Zoom wedding, so I'm really familiar with it. Congratulations! Wow, congratulations. Corona can't stop us. <laughs> That's amazing. So, uh, no, I just want to tell you, all you ladies, that um, I created a free um, live um, um, Zoom meeting on how to use Zoom and how to use it not just for you know, this type of event, but how to use it in order to create your, your own show and do it your own way. And I don't charge for it at all. Um, if anyone wants to come on board, you can. It's live, so you can ask questions if you, want, if you wish. All you need to go to is uh, Facebook groups and look for success strategies. Click join, come on in and tell, and just write somewhere that you want the training. I do 10 people at a time, so you get it. And if you want to email me, in case you can't find it, just go to Sheila at SheilaTalks.com. I'd be uh, very honored to be of assistance to any of you. And you can join my group for free, no cost. And all can I do you, is this teach and train. Sheila, can you repeat that again? Sheila, my email. Yeah, uh, Sheila at I didn't I get Sheila S H E I L A at Sheila S H E I L A talks dot com. Okay. And just be sure that you want to let us know that you want to have the Zoom training. There's no charge. There's no fee. It's just the gift to the chambers. Thank you. Thank you. We love that. Um, well, if we don't have any other questions, I think we will let you all get out of here, eat some lunch. Um, again, we do have another meeting on June 11th at 12 p.m. I just want to thank you, Sheila, so much for taking the time out of your day to come and talk to us today. So thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you, you Sheila. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Nice to meet everyone.